this is Sam Dad here, back with another Samurai Sentai Shin Genji review. I haven't said that in a few years. Today we'll be taking a look at the Samurai Sentai Shin Genji Deluxe Shin Keno. Or are we? Or are we looking at the Power Rangers 20th Anniversary Samurai Megazord Nippon Edition? Take your pick, but this is a really cool item. For the 20th Anniversary of Power Rangers, Bandai of America has decided to release Shin Keno to the United States for a retail price of $79.99. I must say, that's cheaper than Japanese retail, so I like it. It is a Toys R Us exclusive item, but it is basically an exact copy of Deluxe Shin Keno. There's nothing really changed aside from copyright. So you can see the box here is identical to the original, aside from this new banner. It says Samurai Megazord Nippon Edition. Um, this does slide off, so if you are a diehard Shinkanji fan and didn't buy the Deluxe Mecha out of Japan, you can just have the box, you know, normal. Um, this does have a contents list on the back, if that means anything to you, um, and the barcode. Now, there is some new uh, copyright safety warnings and age limits, and also some new copyright on the back. But other than that, the box is unchanged. Um, it's The only change is that it has to be legal um, for America. So you, it still has the disc, it has the shield, it has all the swords um, that fold. And it's really nice having a deluxe Shinkano finally, because I've wanted one for a long time, but I've never wanted to pay eBay prices. But you can see basically everything I'm going to be showing you. Um, except for this, because I can't show you what the Recognize Anto and the Shinken Maru do, because I don't have them. But I am really looking forward to, to opening this up, especially since it's been uh, about four years since I reviewed the candy toy versions. Um, so I'm going to go dig those out so we can do a comparison as well. But you can see there, Five Rangers on the top, or Shinkenjers, sorry, talking Power Rangers a lot lately, and Shinken on the bottom. But there's your box. Now what in, what's inside is much cooler, so let's take a look at Shinkeno. Alright, we're going to take a look at each individual origami before we get to Shinkeno himself. And we're going to do this in backwards roll call order, that means yellow, green, pink, blue, red. That's the way I'm doing it, so if you have a problem, you can skip around the video to do your own order. Anyways, here is Saru Origami, also known as Monkey Origami. Um, this is a nice little monkey. Um, yeah, I know, this is the third time we have taken a look at this particular mecha design. I don't know why, but I like this design of a mecha. Except this is the best version of all three. As you can see, this is Saru Origami. An angry little monkey that's ready to hit things with its giant fists. Um, Articulation-wise, you can move her arms, they kind of go out a bit, but mostly it's just kind of crazy monkey action. Um, you can have them like this, you can do that. Um, you can also have Saru sit like that. I personally want Saru sitting like that. So, um, there's not much else to say, uh, aside from there's Saru Origami. Now, since we have reviewed uh, the Mini Plaw, the... Samurai Megazord and the Deluxe Shinken O. Here's the Mini Pla. Here's the Deluxe Shinken O. Or the, the Samurai Megazord. Not Shinken O. Shinken O is the thing that's in the middle. So, taking a look here, uh, the Mini Pla one did not, was not molded in yellow and so is mostly gray, which looks kind of strange. This one is perfectly accurate to the show outside the opening mouth. And this one is hollow, under-detailed, and has less articulation somehow. So, out of the three, I would say my favorite is the Deluxe Shinken O Saru Origami. Now, moving on, we can transform Saru into her emblem mode. That being the symbol for Earth. And we can also do that with our other versions of Shinkeno. So let me just let the transformation crew take care of that for me now. And here we go. So here is the mini plot earth symbol and here is the... That's 
right, these don't have emblem modes. So, if you could take a guess which one wins, it's the deluxe one. Um, but yeah, really neat. I like these symbol modes. The fact that this one didn't have that is sad. And also, it's simple. It's quick. It's efficient. It folds, it folds, it clicks, it folds, it's done. Also, the uh, triangle symbol is, or the shape is all throughout the back here, which is really cool. I like this. So, moving along. Next, we will be taking a look at the Kuma Origami, the bear. Um, now, this is a nice, deep green color. Uh, my camera likes to portray things differently. But you can see here, it's all silver and filled in with the uh, Shiba Clan logo there. Um, nicely painted overall. You can see his eyes. His mouth opens up. Um, you can also have him in attack mode, sort of. Um, he did this in one episode. But you can see here at the top, you got the square symbol, and you can see the remnants of where his uh, symbol mode is. But you can see there, it's a nice little bear. Um, unfortunately, outside of moving his neck at awkward positions, he doesn't really have any articulation. But that's okay, he's still cool. Now, just like with Sarda Origami, we've reviewed this guy three times, so here he is with his counterparts. Taking a look, the mini plot version seems to be just a smaller scale version. They look pretty identical. Um, the mini plot does have a bit more neck movement that's restricted here because it's an ankle joint, but the mini plot does not have the filled in sections that the deluxe one does. So, there you go. Mini plot's still really cool. Now, this one. The Samurai Megazord version. Um, it's back. Is a. They look about the same. Except this one's got a wider foot. This one is a lot wider overall. This one looks nicer, I must say. Um, also, the lack of paint here is obnoxious, and the lack of paint here. The mini plot. Oh, again, again, the mini plot only has that because I added that. Um, but you can see. They do look different. So anyways, switch them into emblem mode. All you need to do is fold his head away. Just grab this little red switch. And that clicks into place. You can fold these legs up now. Bring this block back. Slide that together. Close these in to lock into place. And there's the wood symbol. Now, if you just give me a second so we can have our comparison of the three, we can do that. So as you can see, the Deluxe Samurai Megazord version fails because it can't turn into symbol mode. The mini plot version did a good job, I thought, um, but the Deluxe version looks fantastic. Now in the show, these the, there, there would be filled in detail here, uh, these little hinges wouldn't be there, but that would be breaking physics, so this is great. It's a nice little block, easy to hold, really freaking cool. Next we have Kame Origami, the turtle. Now this has always been the simplest of the five, and I gotta say, it's still kind of adorable. It's a turtle. It's a turtle that's a circle, and move his little, little legs, or flipper fins, whatever. It's a sea turtle, looks like, because of the big uh, front legs, but it's kind of adorable, and you have it in multiple variations. So the Mini Plow one, eh, same thing. The Actually, this is the closest the Samurai Megazord version uh, got, um, but this one still has the nicest build quality. Like, this is... It, all these are, are pretty sturdy toys, um, but I still like... I still like it. I like all three of them, really. Um, symbol mode-wise, all I gotta do is fold a head in, and fold these little fins in, and there is the symbol. Take the mini plaw, do the same, and for the only time you'll see in this review, take the Samurai Megazord one, and do the same, because the transformation because all those parts are required. So there is all three. Samurai Megazord 1 still loses because it has a peg there, and it has that little round part, so it likes to lean. This one, they have a solid base on it. 
What I liked about all the symbol modes with the deluxe versions is that they have solid bases, so they do all stand. But that is Kame Origami. Um, this one still loses because it's still the worst. This one has bonus points for having articulation. But yeah, there's the three uh, heaven symbols. Next, we have my favorite of the origami, Ryu Origami. This is quite the majestic dragon. It's his mouth that opens. He's got all these different joints, so he can position his head different ways and positions his tail moves. He's got four feet. He can be four feet long. Not really, but you know what I mean. He's really cool looking. He's always looked cool. He's always been my favorite of the five. And there's not much else to say. He's just cool. If you want a smaller dragon, you can have that. If you want him to be like flying straight long, you can have that. You can pose him like this and be like lunging. Or you can have him just kind of sitting up prideful like I like that. So, that said, here's the mini plot one. And oh god, there's the deluxe samurai one. I'm gonna get this out of the way. This is my favorite of the of the Shinkano variations. This looks terrible, especially with that. Go away. Don't want you here. Anyways, we're just gonna ignore the Samurai Megazord version. We can see the Miniplot did a very good job of replicating it, um, despite its helmet that got vanished somehow. Um, that's a different story for Twitter. Anyways, the Miniplot actually did actually did include an extra joint, and that was a ball joint for the head, which I like. So, overall, this is the coolest one of them all, in my opinion. And he's got one of the coolest transformations for an nimble mode. So first you fold him in half, like that, and you fold his head in like that, and bring this up, click that in place, click that in place, flip it around, bam, water symbol. So, so cool, especially since he can, since he holds the helmet of the Megazord, or Shinkano. And here's the other symbol mode. No, we're not bringing that other piece of crap back. Poor excuse for a reorgami. That's why it's a Dragon Sword. Poor excuse for a Dragon Sword too. But anyways, you can see the paint is very vibrant on this. You got the extra details of the, um, what is this? Whatever shape this is. Hexagon. Um, but you can see it goes along the same detail pattern, which is really nice. And this one feels nice and hefty uh, as well. And the mini plus still is awesome. So, let's move on to our last origami. Lastly, we have Shishi Origami, which is used by both uh, Shiba Takaru and Shiba Karu. Um, because watching Kenji, it's awesome. Now, Shishi Origami is the Red Ranger, so it's supposed to be the coolest, but I don't think it just, it doesn't have the same kind of appearance that the Re Origami has. But looking at it, you can see his mouth opens, um, and that's about it for articulation. Uh, yeah. It's still really cool, uh, especially with all the silver paint here. The silver paint is a nice accent color um, for for these these mecha. I really do like it. I also like the mini plot version, who adds joints here, which is really nice because they're a bit loose and his head's a bit tiny. And then the American uh, Samurai Megazord version, which uh, didn't do the like movement either. So basically, the only one that can perform the pentagonal attack. Um, thing where he spreads his wings out like this and flies through things is the mini plot one. So go mini plot. But yeah, there you go. As you can see, there's the three shishi origamis. I guess um, the lion sword over here. Lion sword's missing paint, but shishi origami is still cool. Now this is the most complicated for symbol mode. As you can see here, uh, first you want to move his arms out of the way. Take his legs, um, these legs will split, will fold into here. This will click into place up here, fold the leg in, click into place up here. You want to rotate these around here, bring these down, pop his head in, pop. Why won't that go in? That That's weird. Um, technical difficulties, folks. 
I think that this needs to go... Wow, that is... Okay, now it's in. Um, anyways, apparently you need to pop the head in first. And now you got the emblem mode, um, or symbol mode, whatever you want to call it. It's up to you, really, because it could be emblem or symbol. Um, it doesn't really matter to me. That's why I kind of swap between the two, and I don't really think about it all that much. But as you can see, you got that emblem mode, you got another emblem mode, and that doesn't want to stand. I complained about this in my mini plot review. And you got a lion that can't fold into an emblem mode. But as you can see, the fire kanji is well represented, uh, more so than it was on the um, the mini plot one. I always thought this was the weakest of all the mini plot. Uh, mecha, but there you go. There is um, Chishi Origami's emblem mode, probably the one that's used the most in the show, and it doesn't have any of this stuff on the edges uh, when you see it in the show. So hooray for accuracy. Um, basically, this one does have a standing issue as well because unless you have the pegs, because these pegs rotate, if you have them like this. Um, you can balance it a bit, but it's still unbalanced, and any other position just doesn't fit. So you have to have them with screw holes front. That's unfortunate, but now we can combine these together. All right, now that we've taken a look at each of the origami, let's combine them into Shinkeno, Shinken Gatai. So first, we're going to start with the legs, that being... Uh, Kuma Origami and Ryu Origami. Uh, Kuma, you want to fold back into bear mode, basically. Except, you can fold the legs back in now. Bring the head up. You got a leg. Take Ryu Origami here. Split him in half. Pop the helmet out. Bring this down like that. Pop his head out like that. And you're good to go with that leg. So now you got two legs. Cool. Arms. Sorry, Origami. Folds out. Kame Origami. Folds out. Shishi Origami. Bit more complicated. Fold arms out. Bring these down. Click those together. Pull these down. You want to flip the parts to the front. Bring out his head. Close together his head. Like this. Leg. Leg. Arm. Arm, shiny, shiny, helmet. And there is Shinkeno. But before he's complete, we have a sword that slides in here. And his shield, which clips on his back. And now we have a completed deluxe Shinkeno. So, how is Shinkeno? Very awesome. I think this is probably one of my favorite designs for a Megazord or Sentai Robo. And that's because it is very unique. While it does kind of go with the Voltron-esque transformation of leg, leg, arm, arm, torso, it has the emblem modes that make each individual origami unique. That is why I didn't really like the Samurai Megazord as much, because it took out what was unique about Shinkeno, and that was the emblem modes. What's also very unique is how he looks. First of all, what Megazord has that big of a helmet nowadays? I know, it's that cool. That's why we're looking at the helmet itself. Now there's that little bar in the middle that's inaccurate, but I can understand why they did that gold chrome. Um, is not easy to apply. You got the Chibi Can logo, and then you got the five uh, emblem modes shapes basically on either side of the helmet. And underneath that, you got another face with the Chibi Can logo and a chin strap, which is meant to connect with the helmet. So this little knob that the helmet connects to, which is very cool. On the back, you have the shield, the accessory that was lost from the Samurai Megazord is the shield. As you can see, you got several pegs for other combinations of mecha I probably will not buy because I don't feel like it and I can spend my other money on other things. But as you can see here is the shield. 
It spins because this is a hidden disc um, that has all the all five symbols on them, which is very cool. Um, this is my second hidden disc. Yeah, didn't buy much into Shinkinger's Toyline. But you can see there, it looks really nice. You also have the shield portion, which just clicks on nicely. You got a handle that can be held by Sardor Origami's arm, so he can defend himself. You also put other discs on here, I might add. Um, and you can also take it off and plug it onto his arm. Like that. Which I think looks cool, and is something most Megazords can't do with their shields. You also got the Dai Shinkin, which has the five animals on it, along with the Shiba Han logo. It is empty on this side because of the slot in there, so when you slide it in, it will stay in place, uh, which is really nice and appreciated. That can be held by Kame Origami, and you're good to go. And just because it's more traditional, we have that going on. Now, articulation-wise, you have the arms move. Basic Sentai mecha articulation. Um, you can also kind of rotate the legs a bit, um, but not really. And overall, this guy looks cool. He's got a Shiba Clan belt buckle. He's very slender, uh, considering uh, he is a mecha. And, but he's got these really blocky proportions that make it work. Um, it feels very much like a Sentai mecha, but at the same time, feels very different. And that's why I've always liked this design. And that's why I own this design three times. Here is Battle Damage Mini Pla, uh, Shinkano, because his helmet got lost. Uh, that was my fault. And, let's get that out of the way, the Samurai Megazord. In fact, we could scoot everyone over a little bit so you can see everything. So, looking at the three of them, really more so the two of them, since the Mini Pla is hard to find, what is the best of the three slash two? Well, I gotta say, the Mini Pla has its advantages in having more articulation. Unfortunately, a lot of its joints over the last four years have started to degrade, and he barely can stand anymore, um, because some joints are really tight, and some are very loose. Also, he has a lot of loose pieces, and he's not holding together as well as he used to. Um, this may be because I've played with this figure a lot, because I really like it. Despite that, the Mini Plus is still good. If you can find one for a good price, it's gotten kind of expensive on eBay. Now, when you compare it to the Samurai Megazord, let's take a look here. Just, just these two side by side. The Samurai Megazord is definitely lacking. You can see where the legs are. They didn't line up the paint apps very well on this one. You don't have that issue over here. Now, you do have a more tall look to it, but the blocky proportions work for this one. These symbols are a bit big. They're bigger than these ones. The legs are sl more slender. The arms are about the same, really, despite in missing paint. Then you got the helmet. The helmet flips, slides onto the head, and you can't see his eyes anymore because it slides down too far. It needs to be about there, but it clicks in there. It does get props for not having the little piece in the middle, and the sword is nice for the fact that it's molded on both sides, but it's a cheap plastic, and it's not painted or molded anywhere. And it doesn't have a shield. In the end, you're losing out with getting this one. That is, if you can't afford Shinkano here. Now, this isn't a problem anymore trying to track down a Shinkano, now that you can get them at Toys R Us. They are still $80 at Toys R Us. Which means Samurai Megazord is still cheaper if you can find him. The Samurai Megazord may be hard to find. Now, if you're looking for just a Shin Kino or a Samurai Megazord for your display and you're not wanting to track down the auxiliary mecha, then this is the one you should get. Because it's cheap, or it's cheaper now um, because of the Toys R Us release. It's about $80, it looks really nice, it's really sturdy, it's good. The unfortunate thing is that importing um, Ushi Origami and uh, you know, Mogi Dayo and then all the other mecha will get costly after a while. Getting all of this is simple, 
because you can get it for about 125 bucks at some Toys R Us stores that still have the Gigazord set. It's a lot cheaper to collect all the auxiliary mecha for this one. So if you don't want to buy both of them, get this one if you only want the Samurai Megazord or Shinkano, and get this one if you want everything. Or you can be like me, and get all three, because I got this guy when it came out in 09, so he's kind of unavailable, so that's why he's kind of not in this equation. But I've seen both of these at Toys R Us, and if I did not own any Shinkanos or Samurai Megazords, I would have easily gone with this one. Um, it is a nicer, nicer figure. But, that being said, I would highly recommend Power Rangers 20th Anniversary, uh, Power Rangers Samurai, Samurai Megazord Nippon Edition, also known as uh, Samurai Sentai Shinkanger Deluxe Shinken O. Um, to any real fan of the design, it's really nice, and I'm glad that Bandai of America is importing Japanese mecha. Um, I just wish they'd, you know, replace their Me Megazord line with mecha only, but that may never happen. But for now, we have Shinkano, and I am very pleased with my purchase, and after four years, I finally have one, and that's really nice. So... That is Shinkano. That is the Power Rangers Samurai, Samurai Megazord Nippon Edition. They're one and the same, and I can definitely recommend it. So check your local Toys R Us and bring 80 bucks, and I would highly recommend doing so. Probably some of the best $80 I've ever spent. So anyways, be sure to check out Hirotaka.com for Power Rangers news and more. Also Super Sentai, Kamen Rider, and more Tokusatsu. And talks to Sensei. Goodbye. Thank <music> you.